what was it like for you as you know the lights go down, the trailer comes up, you're hearing the reaction in Hall H? It was pretty crazy. I mean, mainly it was my reaction I was listening to because I'd never seen the trailer, and I was blown away. And then to have you know six thousand people, however many it was, seemingly care about it a lot and react to it in such a positive way was unfathomably exciting. What was the moment that made you react the most? Within the trailer? Yeah. Oh gosh, I. <laughs> I think it was the sound to start with. Like it was just felt so cinematic, and the bass was like shaking my ribs. And then, like I've seen so much of it, but I haven't seen the effects. And what, it's extraordinary the images they've created. Be it a gargoyle flying through the dreaming over my castle, to like being whipped and surrounded by sand, or, or standing at the gates of hell, or the gates of the dream of ivory. Like it was stunning. As you can see, I was. I was overwhelmed. <laughs> no, it's wonderful. I, I was like, please describe the trailer to me more. I would love to just hear that for a few minutes. It, it is such an epic series in itself, just the source material. Obviously, the opportunity to work with Neil is, is truly a, a special one. When you think about kind of the tasks that you all took on and that you in particular took on playing this character, what will kind of always stay with you, resonate with you, stand out about this? I mean... I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm not being. It, that, there was so much. It, it, it was. It was a massive effort. Like it was. It took a lot of hard work, and not by me. But we made. We made it at a very strange time. We made it in the in the time of COVID. And one of the things I'll take away, which it, it, it will seem disconnected to the story, is the talent and ingenuity of the men and women who work behind the scenes to try and realize something of this scale under that human pressure the human pressure of trying to keep everyone healthy and alive and everyone's families healthy and alive and it, it was just exquisite to see these humans solve these problems on a daily basis to try and create what we saw in that trailer when you think about kind of starting this project and, and trying to find your way into the character, what was the primary starting point? How did you initially connect? The, the novels, the, I mean, the, the, the literature. I, I just read it over and over and over again until it was in my bones. Um, and then uh, I think one of the primary parts of his soul is the burden of responsibility he feels for managing the collective unconsciousness of the universe and I had some small fragment of that responsibility in having to manage the dreams and aspirations of the people who've read these books, the people who've already made the film in their heads and have an idea of exactly how it should be and so I connected in that bird. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, it's true that it's, it's a wonderful thing to have an opportunity to be a lead of a show like this um, but it is also a massive massive undertaking to do something like this. When you uh, think about the future of this series, obviously this is only covering the first two installments of the graphic novel. What do you want to see for it in, in terms of, yeah, honestly, how many seasons you want to do? I mean, unfortunately, that is above my pay grade as far as what happens in the future. I, I just want as many people as possible to watch this one. For the people who are not as familiar with the source material, what is something that you want them to know going in, people who are we're converting into fans? I think what I want them to know is that this show really is for everyone. There's only one thing that unites all of us in this room, in this city, in this country, in this planet, and that's that we all dream. 